Here is a physics problem. Uh, there's a lot of variations of this. Let me, let me explain it real quick, and then I'm going to show you how to solve this. I'm going to show you every single part of this because there's a lot to it. Uh, so the basic idea is you have a disk, and this disk is spinning, and there's an object on the disk with a frictional force. And the question says uh, how how fast you have to spin this before the object spins off. Now I actually have this as an actual device. This this is actually an electric motor, but I'm just going to spin it, and I have a penny right there. So you can see that as I spin this, it, the penny stays there. But if I spin it too fast, the penny falls off. Okay, And so there is a frictional force between these. Um, I'm sorry about the shiny lights, but I should have done something. But uh, and, and so we have to estimate that. And uh, let, But let's just go ahead and start on the problem. That shiny thing's bothering me. Okay, so here are the parameters that I picked. Uh, the mass of the object I put is 2.4 grams. The radius of the circle that it's moving in is 0 0.03 meters or 3 centimeters. I just picked these. And the coefficient of static friction is 0.1. So the, the first thing to start with is Newton's second law. This says that the net force on an object is equal to its mass times acceleration. Now, if I look at this object right here, let's draw the forces on it. I'm going to put it as just a dot. Uh, when I do this, this is called a free body diagram. It draws the forces on that dot. Uh, that dot represents this object. When I do that, uh, I need to think about two kinds of forces. Uh, contact forces and long-range forces. So long-range forces are things that interact with that without touching, and contact is things that actually touch it. So what long-range forces would be on an object like this penny? Well, the, the Earth pulls down on the penny, so there's a gravitational force. So that's going to be pulling down like that. And I'll write that as mg. And so g is um, a vector. Uh, you could write this as in vector notation negative 9.8 in the y direction, newtons per kilogram. Uh, the magnitude of g is just 9.8. Then what? that's only long range force. What's touching, what's touching the, the penny? Uh, well, the, the disk is. So the disk actually pushes up and we'll call that the normal force. Uh, the disk also has a frictional force pushing it to the side. And I'll call that F friction. And that's it. So when you have an object on a surface like that, you can, there's really just one force, the surface interacting with it. But it's useful to break it into a force that's perpendicular to the surface, we call that the normal force, and a force parallel, and that's the frictional force. Okay. Now the friction force is really kind of weird. It's an interaction between the uh, atoms in the penny and the atoms in the disk, which is really hard to, to calculate. But we can make a model for the magnitude of this frictional force. The magnitude of the frictional force, and this is static, is going to be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So this does not tell you the vector direction. This is just the magnitude. And the less than or equal to uh, is because you know, if this penny is just sitting there, there's obviously not a friction force pushing to the side or it would accelerate. Uh, so this is the max this gives you the, actually the maximum friction force that you can have from the static friction, which is what we want. So F friction max is equal to mu s times n. So the harder you push those two surfaces together, the greater the frictional force. And and I could talk about friction forever. Uh, but over here also you can see this is kind of weird. It, what, if the force is pushing this way for this object, then shouldn't it be accelerating that way? And should there be a force pushing away? And the answer is, well, what force would push it away? Is it a contact? No, because it's not touching anything but the table, and I've already taken the disk. I've already taken that into account. Is it some long-range force? Well, you've probably only seen two long-range forces the gravitational force, and then the electrostatic force between charges. And it's not, it's neither of those. So there, there is no force pushing it that way. Okay. And in fact, there is a force pushing it this way, and it does indeed accelerate this way. So let's imagine this. Here's an object, here's looking at it from the top. Here's V1 at some instant. And then a little bit later, it's right here with the same magnitude velocity, but in a different direction, V2. 
and there's some angle delta theta. So the definition of acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time as a vector. And you can see here, if I do v2 minus v1, it's going to be, let me redraw these two vectors. Here's v1, here's v2. That's a little bit shorter. So there's delta v. So the change in velocity is towards the center of the circle. Uh, and it turns out, I'm not going to do the derivation now. I do have a, der a, a derivation of this, and I'll link to that down below, right down here. Keep going down there. And the magnitude of this acceleration uh, is going to be equal to v squared, the magnitude of the velocity, divided by the radius r. Uh, now, we also know, uh, and I'll leave this derivation for later too, that if an object's moving in a circle at a constant speed, I could describe that with a velocity, or I could describe that with an angular velocity. And the angular velocity is going to be equal to v over r. So if it's rotating with some speed at a radius, I could calculate the angular velocity in radians per second. That's important. In radians per second as just the velocity divided by the radius. Okay, but this means that as the penny moves, it is indeed accelerating. Okay, so let's skip to a new page. Those are all the big ideas. And let me redraw my force diagram. So I have mg, I have f friction, no f, I'm sorry, I have the normal force, and then I have the friction going this way, ff. And let's call this the x and the y direction. So I have f net equals ma. Now that's a vector equation. It's actually easier to deal with this as two scalar equations. So I could say f net in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. F net in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. I can break that up into two scalar equations to make it easier to deal with. So let's deal with this one first. Okay, what forces are acting in the x direction? Over here, I just have one. I have the friction force. Now, what's the component of this in the x direction? Well, the positive x direction is that way, but this is this way. So this is going to be uh, F net X equals negative the friction force. And that's going to be equal to the mass of the penny times the acceleration, which is also in the negative X direction because that's the direction of the center of the circle. So I'll write this as negative V squared over R because that's the acceleration of an object moving in the circle. Uh, we call that centripetal acceleration, centripetal not centrifugal. I'll link down below a, a great video that someone made, oh wait, it was me, uh, on the difference between centrifugal and centripetal forces. But we're dealing with centrifugal. Okay, now uh, let's just write this out as F friction, the negative signs cancel, equals mass times V squared over R. Uh, and then I'm gonna say uh, V equals omega times r, right? If omega is v over r, uh, v is, I can solve that. I can multiply both sides by r and I get v is omega r. And if I substitute this in, I get f friction equals m uh, omega squared r squared over r equals m omega squared r. Now one more thing, I already know the magnitude of that maximum friction force. It's going to be equal to uh, mu s, the coefficient of static friction, times the normal force equals m omega squared r. So that's my equation of my force equation in the x direction. Now let's go to the y direction. What forces are in the y direction? Well, I have the normal force pulling up in it has a positive component because it's in the positive y direction. And then I have the weight, mg, in the negative y direction, so it's going to be negative mg. What is the acceleration in the y direction? Well, the penny doesn't change its 
vertical position, so it's at zero velocity and it stays at zero velocity in the y direction. So the acceleration is zero. That means I can add mg to both sides and I get n equals mg. That's the y equation. Now be careful. n is equal to mg in this case, but that's not always true. Okay. But now I can substitute this into there and I get mu s mg equals m omega squared r. I want to solve for omega, so first of all the masses cancel. I'm going to divide both sides by r and I get omega squared equals mu s g over r and then I can take the square root of both sides and I get the square root of mu s g over r. Now let's just check real quick. So the units for g are newtons per kilogram. But a newton per kilogram is also a meter per second squared. And if I divide, and the coefficient of friction has no units. And if I divide that by meters, I get no units, meters per second squared divided by meters. So I get one over second squared. Then I take the square root and I get units of one over seconds. And that is the right unit for o omega in radians per second. Radian isn't a real uh, unit, it's a placeholder unit. So this would be the same as radians per second. Okay, let's put in our values. So omega is gonna be equal to the square root of the coefficient of static friction, 0 0.1. The g is 9.8, I'm gonna leave my units off. The radius was 0 0.03. You'll notice that the mass of the penny doesn't even matter, okay. Now I'm gonna use this calculator that I don't like. I need to get my better calculator working. Uh, I'm gonna put this in. Let's see if I can do it. I'm really terrible at this one. Square root, there it is, of 0.1 times 9.8, which I could have done in my head, divided by 0 0.03. And I get 5.72 radians per second. Now what if you want this answer in revolutions per second? Uh, so in, in this case, we're going to have to do a unit conversion. To convert units, uh, I need to just multiply by 1. If I multiply this number by 1, I don't change it, so that's fine. But in this case, what if I multiply it by one re the unit of 1 revolution divided by 2 pi radians? Since 2 pi radians is 1 revolution, then this is the quantity 1 but these fake units can cancel and I get revolutions per second. So if I take that and divide by two pi, so let's just do that, answer divided by two times, I really don't like this calculator, pi, point nine, point nine, let's go point nine one equals 0 0.91 revolutions per second. And that's how you convert units. Okay, so again, this there's a lot of stuff in this problem. Don't think that you can just jump in and say, I got it, okay? Um, there's Newton's second law. There's acceleration of an object moving in a circle. There's friction, okay? There's uh, vector forces. There's a lot of stuff there. And I'm going to try to link all the related videos to build up to this down below. But I might forget. And if I do and you have a question, just post a comment. And I'll try to answer your questions. And that's it for now.